Hello and welcome to the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you major news developments from around the world. Our headlines Pro government groups win big in Jordan's elections. Protests continue in Peru against impeachment of President. Over 70 refugees die in boat accident in the Mediterranean. Pfizer declares that its vaccine candidate is 90% effective. What's the way ahead? In our first story, as per the results announced by the Independent Election Commission of Jordan, the pro-government factions and leaders scored amidst a historically low voter turnout for the elections for the House of Representatives. As per the results announced on Thursday, pro-government figures and independents won a majority of seats with a large number of them from a military background. Of the 130 elected members, 100 are first-time winners. According to the Al Monitor, only 16% of winning candidates have any political affiliation, with the Muslims, Muslim Brotherhood's Jordanian version, that's the Islamic Action Front, claiming victory in 11 seats. Only 29.9% of all eligible voters turned up to cast their votes on Tuesday, November 10th, when the elections were held. There were around 4.5 million eligible voters. In the last elections, the electoral turnout was around 36%. Over 1,670 candidates were contesting from 294 lists. The country was divided into 23 electoral districts and the representatives were chosen on the basis of open list proportional representation. The results also saw a significant decline in the number of women members of parliament. As per the results, only 15 women were elected to parliament, down from 20 last time. Even those were from seats reserved for women. The election for the 130-member House of Representatives was necessitated after King Abdullah II had dissolved the parliament in September. In our next story, protests continue in Peru with thousands taking to the streets against the impeachment of President Martin Vizcarra by Parliament. Vizcarra was impeached on Monday by Congress on the charge of moral incapacitation. Now, this was due to his alleged involvement in corruption. The protests that began on Tuesday intensified on Thursday. They were met with police repression. Dozens were detained and the police attacked protesters with tear gas and water cannon tanks. Journalists from AFP, El Comercio and other outlets were injured by pellet guns and tear gas canisters. Nonetheless, the protesters remained defiant. On Monday, we were hundreds of people in the streets, and by Tuesday, we were thousands, mobilizing against what is without doubt a coup d'etat, said Lucia Alvites, a member of the Peruvian People's Movement, La Junta, and the new Peru left political party. Many Peruvians are disenchanted with their political system and see Congress as the embodiment of this failed system. They also believe that the impeachment of Vizcarra was a political ploy and was meant to divert attention from the charges of corruption that many members of Congress themselves face. Peruvian social movements have called for systemic change beginning with the drafting of a new constitution. Now, next story, at least 74 migrants died when a boat carrying them capsized in the Mediterranean Sea on Thursday. This was in Homs near the Libyan coast. The dead include women and children. The small dinghy was reportedly carrying over 120 people. The Libyan coast guards and local fishermen were able to rescue 47 people. The search for the bodies of victims was still on a few hours ago. According to the UN's International Organization of Migration, this was the ninth such incident since October 1st this year. In a separate but similar incident, a six-month-old baby from Guinea died hours after being rescued from a sinking boat near the Libyan coast on Thursday. The IOM stated that due to the restrictions imposed by European countries on disembarking of undocumented migrants, Travelling by sea and their policy of forcefully returning them to Libya and other places of origin, thousands of migrants are a danger. As per the data available with the IOM, more than 900 people have drowned trying to cross the Mediterranean Sea to reach Europe this year so far. And finally, pharmaceutical giant Pfizer has declared that its vaccine candidate has been found to be 90% effective. Now, even if this vaccine candidate completes all the trials and regulatory formalities, delivering it to the people will be a huge challenge as it needs to be stored in very low temperatures. News clicks Prabir Purkaista and immunologist Dr. Satyajit Rath discuss the various possibilities that exist in this field. What is the immunogenicity or the efficacy of the vaccines, which are now in various stages of clinical trials? And the, the Pfizer one has made a lot of uh, noise the last few days. I'm sure the Pfizer's... Uh, Stock prices have risen significantly. And strangely enough, the oil prices have also risen significantly. On the back of the Pfizer uh, claims about how the vaccine has been uh, highly efficacious, 90% efficacy and so on. But before we go into the Pfizer vaccine, uh, the efficacy part of it, one thing is that we must also understand that three vaccine families that we are talking about right now. One is, of course, the adenovirus vector vaccines, uh, which are Gamalia vaccine, the, the Astrogen Zenka vaccines, and so on. So this is one set of vaccines that we are talking about. Also, the whole 
uh, inactivated uh, virus vaccines, which India is also manufacturing. But apart from that, you have the protein uh, vaccines, uh, subunit of whole protein vaccines, and you have the mRNA vaccines. The mRNA is the only one that requires ultra cold chain, minus 70 to minus 80 degrees. Now, do you think that, and this is the Pfizer vaccine at the moment, also the Moderna vaccine, do you think it actually is something that we can even think of in countries like us, us, and also in large parts of the world, considering even Mayo Clinic has said they don't have the facility for the ultra cold chain for the Moderna vaccine or the Pfizer vaccine? So, um, clearly, the RNA vaccine, um, which require this ultra cold storage, um, which include, as you point out, the Moderna and the BioNTech, which Pfizer is only the money bag for. Yes. Um, but is so the vaccine company that Trump wanted to buy, if you remember, and the Germans were very unhappy about. Yes. Finally, Pfizer stepped in and said, "Hey, we will manage them. Don't worry." Correct. So. Um, the RNA vaccine storage issue, I am personally aware of at least a dozen groups across the world, including in India, who are desperately trying to test small modifications that allow them to be stored at more and more practical temperatures. So you are saying this is an impractical temperature for most countries? It's certainly an impractical temperature. It's an impractical temperature for the US, even though very brave noises are being made by the federal government in the US, at least in the Trump administration. One has no idea how a Biden administration will look at this, especially since Vivek Murthy is uh, uh, co-chairing the Biden COVID task force with a much more realistic grasp of uh, uh, the public health uh, situation. Um, I don't think that that's practicable on a large scale. Is it practicable for well-off people to get an RNA vaccine with this kind of a cold chain? Certainly, pretty much anything can be bought if you have enough money for it. So yes, but is this a public health answer and response? The likelihood is no. One technological response to that reality has been that a large number of groups, and I'm certain that this includes Pfizer and BioNTech and Moderna and so on and so forth, are trying to tinker with the stability issue. Um, I've heard encouraging, you know, lab rumors about stability at much higher temperatures, meaning closer and closer to zero degrees. So um, my expectation is that over the next few months, those issues will also come into play. Now, keep in mind that it depends on how much the tinkering is. If the tinkering is too much, then it needs to go through an approval process all over again. So none of this is easy and straightforward. But clearly, the RNA vaccines have a major scale hurdle of implementation because of the temperature issue. There's, there's, there's just no avoiding that. That's all we have time for today. We'll be back on Monday with more news from around the world. Until then, keep watching People's Dispatch. Yeah,